Hey everyone, and welcome back to Brugly the Backrooms YouTuber's channel. It's me, Brugly the Backrooms YouTuber. And in today's video, I want to bring you all a Backrooms level called level 811, or Titanus Sepulchrum. This level takes us all the way back to a medieval time, but it's also futuristic and very, very cryptic. It's definitely a crazy read, and I know you're going to enjoy it. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Also, go check out my second and third channels, Toogly and Spoogly. I upload several times a week on each of them. More content from me. If you like that, go check them out. Backrooms level 811, or as it's nicknamed, Titanus Sepulchrum, is classified as a class 1 difficulty, and is actually a pretty safe place. And it's partially secure, but you'll see why it's not fully secure in a few minutes. This name of the level, Titanus Sepulchrum, is Latin for the phrase Tomb of the Titans, which is just a cool name, bro. I mean, that's, that's so cool. But this level is called the Tomb of the Titans for a very specific reason, which I'll get into after the physical description. This level itself was recently discovered by wanderers, but evidence in the level shows that it might date back to BC time literally before any recorded history from real life. That's how old this might be. This is one of my favorite things about the backrooms, how far it can go. Time doesn't constrict it, reality doesn't constrict it, it can go wherever it wants to. That's why I like it. Now, the level physically looks like a massive and expansive stretch of prairie land with hills, rivers, lakes, and trees, and even a few mountains sticking out of the ground. The hills and waving lands are dotted with all kinds of trees, as well as a few craters, actually. The air and the atmosphere seem to be pretty close to what Earth's are, and the temperature is mild constantly. So overall, it's a pretty nice place. The level also has a day and night cycle that is close to the regular Earth one as well, which just adds to the creepy parallels between this place and our home planet. But the parallels with Earth stop there because there is no trace of any animals or creatures or any other current life for that matter. It's just a big liminal prairie with ruins in it. Speaking of ruins, this level does have some signs of life from a long time ago, and that sign is in these ruins, and other things, which I'll talk about in the next section. The ruins are scattered all over the level, and they're mostly made out of stones. Some of the structures are pretty simple towers and stuff like that, but some are massive structures with gravity-defying architecture that doesn't really make any sense. Like, it shouldn't be standing, but it is. These gravity-defying buildings are made out of both stone and metal, and the metal buildings are twisted and bent in unnatural ways. Because of how impossible it would be for humans to build these structures in the back rooms, it's thought that a more intelligent race of creatures did, or maybe a bigger race of creatures. Now we have no idea who those are, or what they are, but they would have had to have been pretty advanced. Along with those ruined buildings, there are huge pieces of metal armor and even weaponry laying all over the level. Kind of like the giant sword from the grave level I talked about, but things that are that size are everywhere here. The name of the level was chosen because of these huge relics. The Tomb of the Titans seems pretty fitting because the armor and weaponry here seems like something a titan would use. All of the armor and the weapons have these really strange runes and lines carved into them, which just adds to the mystery in my eyes. Was it the owner of this massive stuff that built the weird metal buildings here, or that caused the craters? Who knows? The relics here can be positioned anywhere though, like just laying on a hill, or shoved into the mountainside, or shoved on top of a mountain, or even in the water, and sometimes even floating in the air? What? Now there are a few specific relics that have been documented, and they're pretty cool to be honest. There is a huge sword shoved into a mountainside that's nicknamed Excalibur. Of course, there is a massive helmet relic named Zahuti that lays on top of a hill. Now, we'll talk more about Zahuti later, because we're not done with it. But it's a big helmet, and there's a giant shield nicknamed Ansel, which is what the Romans called shields as well. 
and this shield is forced into the side of a mountain as well. It's also very broken and old looking. Deeper into the level, there are massive gauntlets scattered around, as well as behemoth sized spears in the middle of those craters that I was talking about earlier. Now, pretty much all of these old relics look like they're battle worn, battle tested in a way. They're cracking and rusty and broken in most places. And whatever or whoever wore them and wielded the stuff would have had to have been hundreds of feet tall to fit the size of it, but no skeletal remains are visible. However, it does leave a lot of questions unanswered. How could things that big be unalive? Like, what else could get rid of them? It would have had to have been something more powerful. Now, there's been some cryptic things discovered about the armor and weaponry here that I'm going to talk about. And the most cryptic thing is that that massive helmet I talked about earlier, which was nicknamed Zahudi, was actually discovered to be a giant cockpit, like a control command center inside of it, which just adds even more to this crypticness. But buckle up, because we're just getting started. Now, these runes that you're seeing on the screen right now were inside of a screen in the cockpit of the helmet, and they're just replaying over and over. And they leave some very interesting hints behind, like maybe the fact that these things wearing armor were giants or giant robots and somebody set inside of this helmet Zahudi to control the movements maybe that's at least what this second document would lead us to believe and this creature that you're seeing right now is named Zahudi so maybe it's an entire being that's a robot named Zahudi and somebody set in their head and control the movements and if there's one then there's probably hundreds of others digging even deeper into these readings from the cockpit of the helmet we can see that a dialogue between some kind of AI and a wanderer in the helmet happened. The dialogue drops even more secret clues, but I won't get into all of them because there's too many for one video. But all you need to know is that apparently humans fought with these giants before. As I said earlier, we thought that we just now found this level, but according to this AI, humans already knew about this level. Nice. It says, quote, We don't understand. Humans have known of this place. You've been here before. You helped us fight. You were the hearts of our units, the core of Zahudi and many others. Now, that does mean that some kind of human interaction happened with these giants. These giant robots or giant creatures or whatever. It's pretty awesome. This might be my new favorite level. I feel like the lore is really cool. To enter this level, you might get no clipped from level 2 by touching one of the pipes there, but the main entrance is from level 797, which is where the most wanderers that have been here came from. It's in a cave there, and you'll just get randomly no clipped. You pretty much have no choice. And to exit, you can go to one of the mountains and search for a cave and try to find an area to no clip in there where the ground is glitching more or a wall is glitching more, but that's pretty much where the most no clipping happens from so far at least only a few people have been here But yeah, that was level 811. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching the video. I, I really like this level. I thought it was very well done. I like how it didn't have too, too much lore. It just enough to be interesting, and I really like it. It's definitely my favorite now. Thank you all for watching and supporting me. Please go check out my second and third channel, and specifically my third channel, Spoogly. I'm grinding videos out over there multiple times a week. It's almost at 20,000 subscribers, which is just crazy. On that channel, I go over cryptids, SCPs, Trevor Henderson, conspiracy theories, all that kind of cryptic stuff. It's all over there. If you like that content, you're going to like me over there. As well as my second channel, where I upload two to four times a week on there as well. All the channels are growing, and I really appreciate you all for that. Thank you so much. I hope you're ready for everything I have planned. This fall and winter are going to be awesome. Hope you're hype. I'm hype, and I cannot wait for you to see the videos I got. Buckle up and get ready. Thank you all for everything, and I will see you in the next video.